I love my cup of chocolate in the morning. Hey, okay, my Max is waiting for his you know what. And we're, we're eating maybe after we do these videos, I'll both, we'll take a walkie. Do you like that? Go for a walkie? Let me know a bit. Ah. Okay, <laughs> he knows exactly what I'm saying. My best friend, right? Are you going to rule and reign with me in the kingdom, Max? Are you going to be my, my companion? <laughs> He's my best friend. But I know that the uh, Lord is rising up in my heart. And it just it, it's amazing. It's, it's given me this peace. It doesn't matter what's happening in the world. That you, that you know that he's raising up in your heart to uh, to rule and reign in his kingdom. My God's raising up a, a headshot ministry to <clears throat> that's going to minister to the bride, right? Anyway, about ISIS. And ISIS is, uh, you no, know, <clears throat> okay, as I was saying, if you look around, I don't know if you can see. I'm just going to turn the camera a little bit. You can see the, the work that I've been doing on this. I've been doing this kind of stuff for 20 years, 25 years, since uh, 1986, actually, 87. The Lord's given me many uh, you know, many layouts and designs and, and what to do to build places of refuge, you know, what to do in a time of crisis and all that. But there's another part of me that's beginning to unfold, and that's, and that's what I was seeing this morning. And it doesn't have to do with, uh, you know, building in the natural. It, 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 it has, you know, building, doing things for the Lord. It has to do with who, who I'm becoming in the Lord, you know, who we are becoming in the Lord. So it's not about doing, you know, the 60-fold realm is about doing. It's, it's about you know, uh, the gifts of the Spirit, right? The gifts of the Spirit, they do. The work of the hands. And you know, when that which is done in part is, is uh, you know, when that which is perfect is come, that which is done in part shall be done away with. That's the timer that we're coming into. And there's a transformation in my heart uh, to be uh, to become like David. That's David is actually the second name that the Lord gave me many years ago, and uh, I feel the unveiling of it in my heart. Uh, David, he was a uh, above all, he was a strategist in war. He was a strategist. He knew he knew how to win a war. Right? He was he was one who knew how to praise God. He put God first and foremost in his life, but he also had uh, knowledge and wisdom of battle, and that's it. It just being released in my heart. It's like a seed. It's opening up, and you just you know what to say and you know what to do. And this ISIS, the the main ploy of this is to divide. Uh, I'm aware that most of you guys are, are aware uh, but you know how much is this actually taking our eyes off the Lord you know ISIS is a big stir you can see what it's you know, done in Europe yeah, what's what's happening now beginning to unfold now in, in, the, in America and in Canada and the the actions of ISIS of these migrants coming in and, and raping and killing people and uh, you know they're bringing, being brought in by our by our own, by our own governments to divide and conquer. It's the Trojan horse within, right? That's the so the whole concept of the enemy, his strategy is to, is to divide and conquer, to to take our eyes off the Lord. As long as we got our eyes on the Lord, now we have at least we have some peace. And uh, so the fruits of all this is of this division is uh, fear, violence. So what do you do? What do you do? What's the strategy? What would God do in a in a situation like this? And it's really quite simple. Whatever the enemy's doing, we are to do the direct opposite. And uh, you know to keep our eyes on the Lord, and 
you look at the church today, the church today is powerless because it's divided from within. There's no uh, prayer base, no real prayer base in the churches. That's been taken out in the last 20 years or so. You know, the you know, church has been so chopped up and so divided into their different groups that there's just no prayer base. They've been undermined. Uh, the prayer base has been destroyed and they don't even realize it. And so their prayer, prayers don't even get get into the heavenlies, very seldom. Just there are intercessors not there and know how to pray. They, they know how to bombard uh, the, the gates of, uh, of, of heaven to uh, destroy the works of the enemy. And that's what it's all about. It's to destroy the works of the enemy. But as long as we're a divided people, it's not going to work. And you and you, you look at the life of David. What, what did he do? You know, he was a leader that God raised up through uh, hardship and trial, and he gathered the people to him. And 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 out of that gathering came forth an army. You know, back in his day, uh, people that were loyal to him, they would lay down their lives to him. You know, for him, and uh, and they, they they fought by his side. To, to win the wars back in his day, right? David had the fear of the Lord in him as one of his qualities. I think I'm going to probably let these run about 12 minutes or so. Just uh, 10 minutes, a little bit too short. So you look at the churches today and they're, they're powerless. They're not bringing forth the fruits of the Lord. I'm not saying this to, to poke anybody in the face. I'm just saying, looking at it the same way that God looks at the churches. The, the churches are, most churches are without power and without, and they don't walk in the authority of the Lord. They're, they're walking in the flesh, and they're they're a divided people. Now, how do you remedy remedy this? Well, first off, don't allow, allow the circumstances of the earth. Whether it be ISIS, whether it be World War III that's pending now, or Nibiru coming in, all these earth changes, earthquakes, volcanoes, all these different things that Jesus said in Matthew 24 would happen. You know, they're God's allowing it. You know, God's allowing ISIS. Uh, believe it or not, uh, uh, the, the Muslim people are the left hand of judgment. God's left hand of judgment. God's allowing this as a wake-up call to wake us up, to shake us, to wake us up. You know, the Muslims are our cousins to the Jews. You know, Ishmael and uh, Isaac, they're, they're related, right? They're half-brothers. And, and so the people of Ishmael, they're God's left hand, left hand of judgment, not, not right hand of righteousness. So they are part of Abraham's seed. So God's using them to to shake up to shake up the world. And uh, well, we need to get our eyes on the Lord, not allow our focus to, to be distracted on on the things that are around, right? Because that's going to bring us into confusion. That's going to bring us into division. And that's going to bring us down. So what's the remedy for all of this? What would David do? And what would David do if he, if he was here today? The first thing that he would do, he would re rededicate his own heart to the Lord. And he'd make sure all the people that were with him, that they, that they would rededicate their, their life to the Lord. Like a new dedication. Get your fire back. Get your first love back. Get, get your prayer life back. You know, get your consecration back. And uh, so once you do that, once we look to ourselves and and uh, rededicate our own hearts before the Lord, then then we can come together as a people. And when we, when we come together as church, so the way that church is doing it, it's not working. People come together, they, they sing in the praise of the Lord, and for the most part, uh, they go away hungry. You know, they go away hungry because they're, they're not being fed. 
God be in bed with the hidden men of the Lord. The because the the pastors and all, all, all that they're not walking in the revelation. They don't have the revelation of the Father's heart, and they're not being being given the not teaching by the impartation by the revelation by by the, by the Holy Spirit. It's most church is man's teachings, is man's programs, right? And uh, as long as you're you're under man's programs, that you're you're under the devil's dominion because God's not in it. Well, how do you remedy this? There is a remedy, and it, it is a second remedy, or, or, or a simple remedy. And uh, I'm, I'm, about, I'm about to go to a funeral on Friday uh, in Hunter Mile. His name is Ernie Dory. And Ernie Dory, he's left a legacy that's, that's touched the lives of many, many thousands of people over a 10-year period in, in Seattle. For some of you that still might be alive, that, that, that uh, may, may have been part and what God did through him over, over these 10 years when God raised up Ernie Dory and brought him to a slum area of Seattle and, and he seen this building that was abandoned and God started a church in that place so sovereignly he brought it together it wasn't man's doing it wasn't man's programs and uh He never, he never taught. God, <clears throat> the God showed up. The the very open manifestation of God's glory, the glory God, the glory cloud showed up. The Shekinah glory showed up for, for ten years in that place, twenty four seven, like the like the pillar of fire, right? It showed up over that place for ten years. Totally an unknown person, you know. You know, people wanted to, wanted to. Do radio programs on him and all that, and he says, "No, I, I can't do that." He didn't allow himself to be put on a pedestal. And uh, so I'm going to come back in another part, and and uh, I'm going to give you the remedy of what we of what we need to do to turn our lives around, so that that we can prepare our times, our hearts for the coming darkness that we're going to see uh, come upon the the world. The end of the September.